Hi everyone. So I want to go through just a couple notes here. Um, I, I want to make sure we can focus on these and hopefully you can see them right on the screen. I'll also post these too, um, but I just thought sometimes it's better to have me narrate through them and just kind of walk your way through them as well. I will see you for class this week. Um, you'll notice that your directions, please make sure to read the directions for week two. You have um, readings that we're starting from our Best American Essays with a Mark Twain piece. And we're also going to be reading an article about the rise of Snatch, Snapchat celebrities and uh, advertising and marketing and um, sort of all that cultural influence of Snapchat. Uh, in addition to starting our course book, They Say, I Say. Um, so some of that I'll split up and talk about in class this week. We'll be starting our first paper and speech, which is really exciting. And we'll do that in class together so there's no confusion. So please make sure for this week to have your responses in by Wednesday evening to me. And then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, you're making sure to respond to your peers in class. There is a survey that you want to make sure to take by Saturday at 10 p.m. at the latest. It shouldn't take you too long, and it's worth points. Um, so make sure you're just reading the directions and following along. And at any point, if you have questions, please, please, please just ask. Uh, it's the easiest way to make sure that you have all the information that you need. Um, because I know it's a lot starting off. We're only into the second week of class, and it's not even a full week yet. So uh, we're getting there. I want to sort of preface the background of this class a little bit and some of the issues and topics that we're going to be looking at. So it's really cool. We're looking at a pop culture perspective here. We're going to be doing lots of readings on pop culture, writing and speech making on pop culture. Um, and it's a topic that everyone can sort of lean into and kind of just have their own opinions that you can find very good research and tangible evidence on. I want to talk a little bit about why, you know, why we have these two areas we're looking at. We're looking at public speaking and we're looking at um, also written communication in both respects too. Now, as involving art, public speaking has changed from this very classical era to a much more modern, modern, much more modern era. Um, we have six key areas, and again, I'm starting off with public speaking because this is usually the area that everyone tells me they hate the most, and that's okay. Um, but all of these areas here that I'm pointing out um, can also be very much translated to writing. So we're looking at key areas. I'm looking at who's doing the speaking. That's very similar to who's doing the writing, who's the author, who's the narrator. What makes a speaker credible? Like what makes somebody believable, authentic? What's their background? Again, plays a big part into writing. Where do speakers find information? Where do writers find information? Where do you all find your information? Um, hopefully not from Google, which we just spoke about. What ethical challenges that speakers face? Ethical challenges are really important, not only for speech writing and giving speeches and disseminating information, but also for writers. There's so many different components of ethics that we're going to get into that play a really big part um, into the whole sphere. How writers deliver their speeches. Again, how speakers deliver speeches and papers are very much intertwined. So um, speeches can be written, speeches usually are written in many respects before or outlined before and then delivered in an auto kind of perspective. And of course, the audience's expectations, like what do you want to get out of this paper? What do you want to get out of this speech? Are you hoping to learn something? Are you hoping to be entertained? Are you hoping to be persuaded of some sort? Are you looking for a combination of all three? It could be one or more of those different areas. Um, looking at public speaking across the centuries, it's evolved from a time where well-educated men, and I should say well-educated white men could speak when you're going all the way back to the onset of where public speaking came from. And it was only to a live audience, only in the, you know, um, addition of technology did speeches finally get translated first to radio, which was a really big deal, and then finally to television, which is how we have speeches disseminated in a big form today. But of course, you know it's not uncommon that you can read speeches entirely, go back and play speeches in their entirety on YouTube on most of the news networks. Um, you have many different tools because of the technology available and the prevalence of the internet to break down speeches, find keywords, find commonalities, annotate these speeches. You have fact checkers who can fact check and 
you know, 0.5 seconds, uh, which is really cool. So we have this translation of, of very much now we're in an era where all members of society are encouraged and have the opportunity to speak and can do so on so many different delivery options. So, you know, we're going to practice on a lot of different delivery options as we go through our entire semester. We're not just going to have the um, very much traditional speech in our class. I talk about rhetoric a lot. It's that technique of using language effectively and persuasively, whether you're speaking or whether you're writing. It's absolutely an art of discourse. And what this means is, you know, we're trying to use all these different methods to convince someone, influence someone, please an audience, and so much more that kind of comes into this. So these are really big parts. There's so many people um, who study the art of rhetoric, and it's really cool. We'll look back at some of the evolution of how these sort of came to be. I use this, this is one of my favorite examples, probably because um, I feel like I said this a lot growing up to my sister. <laughs> when a person's getting on your nerves and you start feeling irritated, you say to them, okay, why don't you leave me alone? But you don't, you don't want an answer to that question. You don't want them to give you a hundred reasons why they should leave you alone. You want that person to stop irritating you. So having direct language is so crucial for effective communication or to make use of rhetoric, um, both in speaking and writing. And any situation where you can make use of rhetoric is something that we call a rhetorical situation, which is right here bottom. Now, I'm sure you might have heard this before in some of your other writing classes. It's very much based on argumentation. Uh, and we're going to use that throughout the entire semester. So if rhetoric sounds like a too complicated or a too fancy kind of terminology for you, it's this tool for writers and orators or speech makers to empower them to convince their readers and listeners about their point of view. Um, Often you might find more rhetoric examples in religious sermons, political speeches. They try to make comparisons. They try to draw really good examples to evoke emotion, to, you know, sort of hush their rivals. And all this is done in efforts of persuasion. They want you to believe in them, in something, in a particular way. Um, one of my favorite places to look is advertisements because whether you're looking at TV, print, radio, um, less and less print, I think these days, less and less magazines, uh, but even online so much. Advertisements have a touch of rhetoric to them. They're trying to boost their sales by convincing people that their product is better, that whatever concept they have is better than what's on the market. So of course, they're going to try to lean in and they're going to try to convince you through logic and emotion and reason, credibility, they're going to try to get you to believe in that way. So it's so much very linked to the writing that we do. Um, why is it important, though? I think the biggest thing to think about is why is it important that we have speech making, that we have oral communication? I spoke of this in class the other day, but public speaking isn't going anywhere. And the efforts to collaborate in so many different respects in your professional fields are just so important. Um, and I don't I know when you're looking at a syllabus or you're given an assignment and you're charged with the task of coming up with a presentation, yeah, it's not always easy to get up in front of a group of, you know, 10, 12, 15, 20, maybe even larger amounts of people. But the amount of what you get out of these is so greater. Um, no matter how well you think you did or not did, you absolutely can still increase your self-confidence. And that's a huge thing. That translates over your entire life. What a lot of people don't realize is that, and this is so key, improving your listening skills is so important um, because when you're presenting a speech or you're listening to a coworker or you're listening to these notes right now, having what you all said, um, a majority of you said in your first response this week, the ideas to make sure you can concentrate are really, really important. So um, force yourself to concentrate and to listen. I'm only on like nine minutes of these notes, so it's not terribly long. Um, but forcing yourself to have better listening and focusing skills. You look and listen and learn about how an audience adapts. Not every audience is like another audience. And it's really important to try to figure out cues and to look at messages and to be able to read an audience and to know how to adapt your speech to them. Of course, credibility is going to play a big role in here because it helps for you to know where to look for the best information to give your audience. 
and it helps you with locating and evaluating information greatly. And honestly, something that I appreciate, it helps you for better organizing and presenting your ideas. We can all work on organization and presentation. So having those strategies are just really good life strategies to translate through. Um, a couple of our different parts of public speaking, it's so audience centered. So like I said, you learn to read the cues, you focus on their needs, their knowledge, their interests. So sometimes you know the background of where your audience is coming from, sometimes you don't. And so you have to come from, and we'll practice this quite a bit this semester, and you know, sort of all encompassing kind of point to it. We need to choose really good supporting materials. That so far gone is that PowerPoint presentation. I'm only going through a couple notes now just to get you started, but PowerPoints seem kind of obsolete anymore. We wanna use technology to get us the best type of information. You're of course incorporating these different arts or divisions of invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery. These we're gonna break down throughout the entire semester. They're so important in both writing and public speaking and developing a speech and ideas. What I also love is public speaking encourages narrative thinking. It encourages you to come up with a storyline. So even if you're putting same thing with, with writing, which is so amazing. You're putting a concept, you're putting ideas together from beginning to middle to end, and you're filling in the gaps with your imagination. You're looking for patterns. You're looking to bring in past events. And you're identifying relationships with each other and around the world. And you do so by bringing in outside information, which is so crucial and so key to having unders understand your material. And finally, Something else to think about as we go through semester, a lot of different ways of communication have evolved. So what was once just a one way, you know, very traditional form has so many sophisticated different models these days. So we constantly have to think about the elements of public speaking. We have to think about the speaker. We have to think about what message we're trying to get across. Our channel, how are we gonna do this? Who our audience is? Something we all don't think about is the noise that kind of sort of encompasses the background. The feedback that we get, we get feedback when we write, we also get feedback when we speak. The context to which we're putting our, our speeches, our presentations in, and of course the environment. Um, you as the speaker, you as the writer, you're the one who has responsibility for presenting all of these different types of information. And lastly, your message is gonna include both verbal and nonverbal communication because public speaking really involves multiple channels of communication. You're gonna to have to have different types of media while you're speaking. You're gonna be doing a lot at the same time. All of your intended recipients are the audience members. So this is nice for our class. You know to predict that a lot of the materials are gonna be given to each other. But that's not to say that some of these speeches and some of these presentations and papers that you're gonna give you might want to share with other people outside of our class. So the audience is really important and we will be giving feedback through nonverbal responses, written responses, questions, comments, and of course, you have to have communication with the speaker. That's what's really gonna get you the success is that one-on-one -on -one talking and saying, here's the strengths, here's the weaknesses, because we all have them as speechers. A lot of different issues that today's public speaker focuses on are on ethics and the writer too. Cultural awareness, using different presentation softwares. Um, because so much comes from the internet, we have a lot more ethical responsibility where we have to very, very, very carefully research our writing, research our speeches, and document everything. And we really, 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 especially speech makers, have to be diligent against plagiarism. Now, these are just some of the bigger highlights on what we're going to be touching upon during our semester. But I wanted to give you sort of an overview notes. I will also publish just a, you know, um, text form of this too. But I thought having me kind of go through it with you saves us some time in class and gives you just some um, different direction about some of the issues and hopefully can help you figure out what some of your strengths and weaknesses are so we can kind of play it from there. I'm really excited to get into our first, you know, you kind of just have to sort of jump into it and go for it. Um, the longer you wait, the harder it becomes. So we're going to use some of these notes and some of these ideas to help us as we approach our first speeches and papers this week.